hi everyone in this video i am going to explain about the design of sequential mass logic circuit sequential logic circuits are nothing but it is an extension of combination logic circuit by just connecting a memory element in the feedback so sequential sequential refers to sequential refers to one by one one after another one after another sequential refers to one after another that means in a sequence manner the output will be generated one after another and sequential circuit is also designed by using combinational circuit sequential circuit is designed using a combinational circuit combinational circuit plus a memory element a memory element in a feedback network memory element in a feedback network okay so a combinational circuit we have a combinational circuit the output of this combinational circuit see here we have uh, several inputs and several outputs for any combinational circuit so these are the set of inputs we have and these are a set of outputs we have and now a part of the output is connected as feedback so here the feedback is provided by element called memory so this is feedback network and connected back to the input of the combinational circuit okay so if you have a combinational circuit along with the memory element then we can definitely con uh, name it as a sequential circuit because a pure combinational circuit does not have any memory element if a memory element is there we can call it as a sequential circuit so here memory refers to here memory element is nothing but nothing but a latch a latch or a flip flop a latch or a flip flop a latch or a flip flop latch or flip flop both are one bit memory storage elements <coughs> latch or flip flop both are one bit memory storage elements they can store either one or zero for one clock pulse at, at a time okay here in sequential circuits the operation of the logic circuit depends on depends on the clock signal depends on the clock signal very 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 important signal so clock signal decides the entire operation or even the time for the operation of the logic circuit okay the clock signal is the one of the input signals for the sequential logic circuits okay because it only decides the operation and time domain what is the time delay occurred between the input and output that will be completely depending upon the clock signal and whenever you use the term latch or flip flop definitely they will be operated with the clock signal suppose if you take latch that will be operated with enable signal and if you operate uh, work with uh, flip flop then definitely we should use a continuous time changing signal nothing but continuous uh, uh, oscillating signal nothing but a clock signal <coughs> okay and generally generally logic circuits are classified into two types one is combination logic circuits that we have seen in the previous videos 
and the second one is sequential logic circuits sequential logic circuits so sequential logic circuits are nothing but combination logic circuits plus memory elements in a feedback the sequential logic circuits are again made up of three circuits one is bistable mono stable and last one is stable we might have studied this bistable mono stable and a stable oscillators in your previous subjects the same bistable stable multi uh, mono stable multi vibrators which are made up of a bipolar junction transistor now we are going to construct the same using cmos technology and that cmos technology transistors are now acting as a sequential logic circuits okay sequential logic circuit is nothing but it is made up of any one of these three oscillators oscillators but the most commonly used sequential logic circuit is made up of a bistable multi vibrator a bistable multi vibrator bistable multi vibrator is other uh, in other terms calls also called a flip flop also called a flip flop okay so let us see what is what individually what do you mean by bistable monostable and stable so first one bistable multi vibrator so bistable as the name clearly tells that it has two stable states it has two stable states it has two stable states so each of which can be attained under certain input and output conditions each state can be obtained uh, attained in certain input and output conditions and the second one is a stable so a stable a stable multi vibrator or a stable oscillator it has no stable states it has no stable states it has no stable state as it is as it does not have any stable state there is no use of there is no use of any triggering pulse but what about the bistable in the bistable multi vibrator or a bistable oscillator it has two stable states that means whenever a signal attained in one particular state automatically it will be continued until we apply any triggering pulse okay and the third one is mono stable mono stable so mono stable is nothing but mono stable is nothing but it is having it has one stable state and one quasi stable state okay here in bistable multi vibrator both are stable states here a stable multi vibrator both are quasi stable states both are quasi stable states quasi means temporary here quasi refers to temporary quasi refers to temporary stable state that means suppose if any if output of any vibrator is attained to a vdd logic high signal in quasi stable state after some amount of time after some amount of time automatically the signal will be coming back to logic zero the signal will be coming back to logic zero without applying any external signal without applying any external signal see automatically automatically coming back coming back this is what quasi stable state quasi stable state but in in the case of stable states the signal will be continue like this this is regarding stable state until we apply a triggering pulse whenever we apply a triggering pulse this is the triggering pulse 
whenever we apply a triggering pulse then the signal will be coming back to the other state okay such type of stable state this is called stable state this is called stable state okay again after going back to zero again it will be a stable state if it is a bistable multivibrator the other one is also stable state if it is a monostable multivibrator the other one is quasi stable state hope you understand the difference if it is bistable multivibrator again this is a stable state so we need one more triggering pulse to bring it back to logic one again we may need a triggering pulse to back to zero so we need two triggering pulses to change the status of the bistable multivibrator output as both are stable states but whereas in the monostable multivibrator we need one triggering pulse because the other one is the quasi stable state and in a stable multivibrator as both are quasi stable states we do not need any we do not need any triggering pulses automatically the signals the logic signals are changing keep on changing 1 to 0 0 to 1 but in our sequential logic circuits in our sequential logic circuits sequential logic circuits the bistable oscillators are used for used for their design that means bistable multivibrator among these three a stable monostable and bistable among these three we use bistable uh, circuits as an example for the sequential logic circuits most commonly we use bistable multivibrator only okay don't forget this so in the next video i will explain the behavior of bistable multivibrator by taking the uh, sema circuit diagram thank you